in this video I want to walk you through how I combine both 2D and 3D animation to create this short animated clip using both Cinema 4D and Clip Studio page. So the first thing I did was to import a very simple 3D background which will be a gaming setup and then dropped on some simple textures and materials and also created a simple lighting setup. So the vision I have for this is that I want to animate both the chair and the glass, you know, just to give the, the 3D aspect of the entire animation some more life. But in order to do this first, I have to know how the 2D character would interact with the 3D background. So from there I went on to, you know, just to shoot some references, just to give me an idea of how you know, character would would be if and then from there I would just start to do the first rough animatic version of the animation so as you saw in the beginning of the video the animation is basically a, a gamer or I can say a gamer dad and his son you know would walk across the screen and then try to take the, the glass or the beer glass from the table but being so caught up in the game, the father wouldn't, you know, give him his full attention, but just try to shrug him off to leave the glass. So that's the idea that I have for the animation and everything leading up to that is trying to fulfill that vision. So after that long process, this is the, the final look at the, the first animatic or the first draft of the animation. And then from there I would just import the final background into Clip Studio Paint and then work on adding some in between and smoothing out the, the animatic. Also I added a, a little simple liquid animation for the glass when the sun tries to Pull it from the table. And then after that long process, here's the final result. You can say that this is the final animation that I'll be working with in terms of the movement of the characters. So from here, all I would need to do is, you know, get smooth and clean up line art. And this is probably, you know, the easiest part of, the, of the, the entire process but it can be very time consuming so you just have to you know, pace yourself and try not to rush because you want to eliminate all you know sudden jumps and everything that would allow the animation to not look as fluid as possible. And immediately after that I went straight into coloring the characters. So Clip Studio Paint has a, a few interesting ways in which I can approach coloring but my way of doing it was by firstly matching the frames of the line work with a new set of empty frames and then hold on I'm just erase here to give you an idea of what um, to give you an idea of my process so then I would just go ahead to turn the line work into a reference layer and you do that simply by touching the little the lighthouse icon right here. I will then use the selection tool and that comes with three options but I will use selection for reference to layers. And then from there you would hit alt delete you know to fill the entire screen or the entire canvas with you know whichever color you choose. I use green because this would be the color of the, the sweater that the character is in. And then from there now you'd simply touch outside of the character with the selection tool and delete it. And I'll do that for inside you know, the section that I know wouldn't have any colors. 
and then I would just, you know, simply erase any little spillage of the color that should be there. But something to keep in mind is the turbulence of the, the selection tool. The lower the turbulence, the more spillage colors would have, and you know, that would be a lot more work because you would have to go inside and erase all those unnecessary colors that you don't want. The higher the turbulence, the less spillage you would have. You would probably still have to go in and erase a few things, but you know, it would still be less work. Animation overall is hard work, but you can save a lot of time when you work a bit smarter. So from there, all I would do is just fill in the character now with all the colors that I know it should have based on the color palette. And the next thing to keep in mind is the close gap for the, the paint bucket tool. So I would just fill in each area and then, you know, erase or draw in any little mistakes that come out because filling it won't be as perfect. And from there, I would just repeat that process over and over until it's finished. But what I did was to focus on one area first. So I ensured to finish the character's head with all the colors that are needed and then I moved on to you know, the lower body. And then I would just repeat that same process over and over again for the for the sun. And then after that very long process, here is the final animation. Clean lines, the base color of the characters. No lighting or shadows. So the way I wanted to approach lighting was a bit different you know, than the, the traditional way of drawing in both the lighting and the shadow frame after frame. I wanted to see if I could try it, you know, maybe a simpler way. So first I mapped out in clip studio paint how I think the lighting would look. And then I would just jump straight into After Effects. So this process that I used is very simple and a lot less time consuming. Firstly, what I did was to create a solid and this would represent the, the shadows. I would then duplicate the layer on which I want to add the shadows on and put it above the solid layer and then change the track mat, which is this small section that you see none, I'll change that to alpha, which would allow the solid to look like this. And then I would change the blending mode to multiply. So from there, I would just use a pen tool and map out where I believe my shadows should go. For the purpose of this video, you know, I'll just do, do a simple mapping out of where I believe the shadows would go. But on your own time, you know, you'd make sure that the shadows are accurate and so on. So from there now, I would just hit MM, so that's M2 times on, on the solid layer. And you get some settings for the mask. And you can play with these settings, you know. You can also play with the feathering and the expansion, you know, and you know, spend the time to make sure that it's looking as good as possible. And then to animate the mask, I would close the, the layer settings, hit them once, select them all, and then under where you see mask path, you'd click that to create a keyframe for all of them. And then from there, you would basically keyframe the position of, the, of each mask that you created. So you'd have to enable back the pen tool and you know go inside now and start to edit each individual mask that was created and setting it back into the same position as before you know, to keep the, the movement of the shadows consistent. And also another thing to mention is that while selecting each point on the mask you can hit Alt 
to get round edges and you can go in you know give it more control to edit how you know the mask would move and I will then repeat the same process for the rim light the next thing I will then move on to is animating some aspects of the 3D background and as mentioned earlier in the video I wanted to animate both the chair and the glass and I would animate these based on how the character interacts with the background so in Cinema 4D I imported the animation of the photo on a simple plane and then use that as a reference or a guide as to how the chair would move and I would then do that same thing for, for when the sun would pull the glass or try to pull the glass from the table And to then finish things off, I would import everything into DaVinci Resolve where I would then do the final composition, sound effects, editing and some simple color grading. And if there is any aspects of the video that you would maybe like me to go more in depth into, you can feel free to comment that below. And if you're also interested in getting animation like this, feel free to reach out to me on Fiverr. You will find the info in the description. And yeah, thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. And here is a look again at the, the final result.